Good morning and welcome to worship. So glad you could join us here at St. Stephen's on this Pentecost Sunday that we celebrate today. Uh, a little shout out to all of those who helped um, by sharing their photos of red things um, that you were seeing before our, our during prelude, um, as well as those who donated the beautiful uh, geraniums uh, in honor and memory of loved ones uh, that we will later plant around our church building. Uh, so thank you very much for your gift and donation. Just a couple of things. Please note that we are having communion this Sunday. Uh, so I would invite you, if you have not already, to set your table. Make sure you have some bread. Um, if you have crackers or whatever you have available to you at home uh, to set it before you, as well as wine or juice or if, you, if water, um, any of those items um, have at the table. Also light a candle remembering that God's presence is with all of us on this beautiful day. Um, and if you would like to have a pen or paper available for prayer time, that you can write your own thoughts and prayers to God through that time. We are not having our Zoom fellowship today, as it is a special occasion. We are going to be having our Pentecost parking lot parade for those local folks who are sort of near us, you're welcome to take a little jaunt, maybe leave right after communion if you need to. Um, but we'll try to gather as close to 1030 as we can, depending on how long the service goes today. Uh, and then we will, uh, or at least by 1040, invite you to come in the normal entrance of our um, grounds. And we do have it all plotted out for you. And we will be there to direct you along the way. So you can roll down your windows, shout out hellos and hoorays, um, grab a hymn book if you want to, and loop as many times. Um, but we're just really looking forward to see your faces. We have been missing them. So thank you and hope you can join us. At this time, we are going to begin our worship. You are invited to respond to the call, come Holy Spirit, come, with the words, come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit, come. Come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. With wind and with fire, come to us each in our place. Kindle in us the flames of your spirit. Sustain these spirit flames so that they burn brightly and illuminate the darkness around us. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Challenge and comfort us. Encourage and nourish these spirit flames so that we may return to this place burning with a spirit of faith, a spirit of love, and a spirit of justice. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Renew our lives. Renew our faith. Renew the world. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Oh, 
of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Mm-hmm. Let us pray. O oh God, on this day, you open the hearts of your faithful people by sending into us your Spirit. Direct us by the light of that Spirit that we may have a right judgment in all things and rejoice at all times in your peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. At this time, I would like to invite the children to pay a little extra special attention, come a little closer, um, and let's have a little time. So, you know, we have things that our parents make us do. I always grew up with my dad constantly saying, Elisa, wash your hands. Elisa, did you wash your hands? Did you wash it with soap? Did you wash them? Yes. And we wash our hands and we take care because we don't want to spread germs around because germs can make us sick, right? I know this is not something new to you. We've been hearing it since we can remember probably, but Now with coronavirus, we are even making extra special care and trying not to spread that contagious germ and virus around to make people sick. So I have a couple things with me. I'm sure you have been seeing a lot of these. We always have these in the sanctuary. I have a a hand sanitizer for my purse, hand sanitizer in the car. We have big hand sanitizers for in our big spaces um, where we have lots of people uh, because it is important to continually kill those germs so they don't spread, right? And I even have here a mask. We've been seeing people with masks to take care to not spread germs. Well, So we have things that we really want to stop and not let them spread, and that we don't want those contagious things to go. However, sometimes things that are contagious are good things. Or, did you know when you yawn, that could be kind of contagious? If you see somebody yawn, you might yawn too. Eh, That's here or there. Did you know that laughter can be contagious? And that's a good thing to pass around, isn't it? If you get the giggles and then all of a sudden somebody else gets the giggles, it makes everybody feel good. Well, today, we're gonna be hearing about something that is very contagious, that is a really good thing. You see, God shared God's spirit with all of us. And it started with the first disciples, where the spirit came upon them and within them. And they were told that Jesus said, pass it on, share it, spread it, spread it all over. Because God's spirit shows love and care and, and moves us and shakes us to be able to share the good news of God. And that's a good thing, right? And so each of us in our baptisms, and if you have your bowls of water, dip the water, dip your fingers in the water, mark your your forehead with the cross and remember that you have received God's spirit. You have had that passed on to you. And then in turn, you are asked to in action and through word, through telling stories, God's story, that we can also share that and share it abundantly. There is no stopping that one. Like the germs, we want those stopped. But God's spirit, spread it all around and pass it on. Will you pray with me? Most holy God, thank you for sending us Jesus, who then sends the Spirit among us and in us, that we might continue your work in love and grace. Help us to spread it and pass it on. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
A reading from Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it's only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will share portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious days. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. Strong, be sure. Unto you, O oh God, we praise, we give. 
A reading from 1 Corinthians. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith in the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. on that first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his sides. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So, which spirit story do you prefer? We've just heard two significantly different stories of the first disciples receiving the Holy Spirit after the resurrection of Jesus. John's Gospel rendering is that it happens the Sunday evening of Jesus' resurrection. And there, Jesus mysteriously comes through locked doors to meet his frightened, grieving disciples, and he leaves peace with them and then gives them the Holy Spirit, breathing on them. The second rendering comes from Acts, the second book in the Lucan series. Jesus has ascended to heaven already, and the disciples are doing as they were told by him, and praying and waiting and trusting in God's next move. Well, they're in the house, and the Holy Spirit comes suddenly in a great and violent wind, um, blowing um, into the house and the dis where the disciples are gathered. Tongues of fire flicker over their heads as they are then pushed out into the streets and crowds proclaiming Christ in all kinds of languages of the people gathered there in Jerusalem to celebrate Pentecost, no less, the giving of the law of Moses on Mount Sinai. 
And then all of a sudden law and gospel have come together roaringly in one place. Do you have a preference? A favorite? I often choose when preaching to pick one or the other because they are so different. But the truth is, I think we need both stories. The truth is, one story is not enough to contain the Holy Spirit. The Spirit is as gentle as the breath of Christ in a closed room where it will move slowly to stir hearts and minds in sheltered places. The Holy Spirit is as forceful and instant as violent wind and flames rising, blowing doors open, and speaking in many languages to reach far and wide. Yet as different as these stories are, there are important elements that bind them together to inform us today. In both cases, Jesus gives his faith community uh, the gift of the Holy Spirit. And in receiving the Spirit, the church receives Jesus. And with the Spirit, the church receives Jesus' own capacity to make God visible in witness, word, and action. It is clear also in both stories this is not an exclusive call. God wants the Spirit to be shared with everyone. God insists on crossing all kinds of boundaries to share God's love, mercy, redemption with all. Now, in John's Gospel, Jesus says they will forgive or retain sins can be a little confusing. Theologian Matt Skinner says that Jesus is not appointing the church as some kind of moral watchdog here. John primarily defines sin as an inability or refusal to recognize God's revelation in Jesus. So the resurrected Jesus tells his followers that with the help of the Holy Spirit, they can set people free. That's a better translation than forgiven. To see God and discover abundant life in Jesus. Or retain sins, which will result in a world full of people left unable to grasp the knowledge of God in Jesus. So the church does not, so if the church does not give witness to Christ, then the church keeps people from experiencing the fullness of of life that Jesus offers. And then we go to the Pentecost story, and at its heart, in Acts, it is not about the really the spectacle and drama. It's about the Holy Spirit showing up and transforming ordinary, imperfect, frightened people into the body of Christ. It's about the Spirit carrying Christ followers out of suspicion, tribalism, and fear, and into a radical new way of engaging God and our neighbor. And within both of these stories, when the Spirit comes, it changes lives. It changes the world forever. And today, we are gathered with the same unpredictable, compassionate companion spirit who was breathed, poured, blown onto those Jesus followers long ago. And the spirit now continues to blow us, guide us, stay with us, call us with the same purpose, to share the good news of Christ who restores and renews all of creation and all of humanity. And in light of God's track record of crossing all kinds of boundaries and God's call to bring hope and new life to all. I am particularly grieved this week with the death of George Floyd in Minneapolis while being restrained by a police officer. 
his death following on the heels in recent weeks of the shooting of Armand Arbery in Georgia and Breonna Taylor in Louisville, Kentucky. All three African Americans, all three should still be alive. Sadly, George Floyd's death is not the only tragedy this week in our world where someone in power has exercised excessive force over another. The list of injustices done unto others in our world is overwhelming. And today we are reminded again how broken, fallen, and far away we are from Jesus' prayer of unity. And yet, this call is still there. The opportunity to answer Jesus' prayer is still there to open our hearts to the nudging and beckoning of the Holy Spirit. You know, as Pastor Larry uh, preached so eloquently last week, our prayers are ones of lament in the midst of tragic and unnecessary losses that surround us. We grieve for the ones who are suffering, for the ones who have lost so much. But we can't stop at grief and lament. Let us ask the question that the people of Jerusalem asked the apostles on the day of Pentecost after Peter's sermon. Brothers, what should we do? You know, last summer, the ELCA Churchwide Assembly passed a social policy, condemnation of white supremacy and racial rhetoric, which states, as persons called to love one another as God has loved us, we therefore proclaim our commitment to speak with one voice against racism and white supremacy. We stand with those who are targets of uh, racist ideologies and actions. So what can we do? I have a few ideas to start, and I'm sure you have some too, and there are many others out there. But first, I think we need to pay attention to the injustice and not let it just wash over us, especially when it comes to race in our country. Listen to the stories of people of color. I mean, really listen. Send our second, we can talk to our children, our grandchildren, our nieces, our nephews about how God's love is for everyone. Teach them about Jesus' command to love our neighbors and that all are our neighbors. Remind them over and over again how much they are loved too. Third, we can be upstanders. On social media, wherever we are, to stand in solidarity with those who are being discriminated against or bullied or when lies and half-truths are propagated against others. We need to stand up and say something. Fourth, we can advocate for just laws and policies with our elected representatives from our local communities to national levels. There are Lutheran advocacy groups working every day to enact laws that are in alignment with our faith traditions and values. Just Google ELCA advocacy to find ways that you can help. And finally, we can vote, research, discern, and vote to elect candidates who value all people who aren't satisfied with the system as it is now, who seek to change and improve our communities, our country, for the sake of the well-being and health of all citizens. Going back to scripture in the letter of, to the Corinthians that we heard today, Paul instructs the young Corinthian congregation with this, what the spirit is up to. Just listen, it runs countercultural. Paul says that it, we are all one in the Spirit, the Spirit of Christ. We are all one body. There is no part of the body that is better than any other part of the body. Each of us is given spiritual gifts 
It's not just for a few. It's not, it's, it is for everyone. We all get gifts. Spiritual gifts are not used for our selfish, in, our individual gains, but for the common good. You see that again and again. So here at the dawn of a new era, on the birthday of the church, called to spread to the ends of the earth, the display is for everyone, all flesh, Male and female, old and young, slave and free, people of every skin color, sex, or sexual orientation, gender identity, culture, language, are invited and included, and not just invited, but gifted and expected to prophesy and to dream too. Adelaide Ann Proctor, 19th century poet, said, dreams grow holy, put in action as the Holy Spirit continues to blow through the church, God's story in all its complexities continues as we live, breathe, and tell others of God's love, mercy, and grace, which knows no boundaries. Friends, as a church, as God's people in this place, we can count on the Holy Spirit to shake things up, to prepare and equip each one of us to share the disruptive, surprising, life-giving grace of God, God who will not rest until all people enjoy the abundant life intended for all creation. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Amen. Amen.
On this day of Pentecost, we unite in prayer, asking God to send the Holy Spirit on the church, the world, and all who are in need. During the silences between petitions today, you will be invited to speak or type the words, Come, Holy Spirit. Restore with your breath the whole creation, especially the lands and waters laden with pollution and the animals whose habitats are threatened. Come, Come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Send your spirit on the leaders of nations, on legislators, and on judges, that the people of the world will benefit from your justice and your peace. Visit all who are suffering, all who feel hopeless, and all who face death. Send healing to those we name here before you, especially Lindsay, Christy, Ernie, Norm, Shirley, Dan, John, and the family of Sylvia Reinhold. Come, Come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Restore to health all those who have contracted the virus. Uphold health care workers, grant jobs to those who are unemployed, and assist researchers in discovering a vaccine. Come, Come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Bless those who are graduating from schools and universities. Give our youth hope for their future. Come, Come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Show our nation and our churches how to connect with those whose language is unfathomable hopelessness and despair. Give us the strength to fan the flames of justice and righteousness. Breathe in us the spirit of peace that overcomes grief and a spirit of light that overcomes the darkness. Come, Come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. As Elizabeth welcomed Mary to her home, give us ways during this time to share with one another the faithfulness we receive from you. Surprise us with unexpected grace. Come, Come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Hear also the cries of our own hearts, offered out loud, in writing, in the comments of this live feed, or held in our hearts. Come, Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Receive our praise for all who for centuries have gone before us in the faith, from the first Pentecost, throughout Christian history, and up to this week. Come, Come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. That we, at the end, rejoice with all the saints in your presence, we pray. Come, Come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also, and also with, with you. you. Let us take this time to share Christ's peace with one another. You can share it on the live feed, share it with those around you. If you have somebody in your home, share it with us. We're sharing it with you. Take time and share Christ's peace. And I also would like to again, I can't thank you enough for your continued support in sharing your offerings through mail, sharing them through uh, online. Um, you can always find it on our website or on our Facebook page. We are thankful for your support in our mission and ministry that continues because of you. Let us pray. Are we ready? Are you ready? Let us pray. Merciful God, our ordinary gifts seem small for such a celebration, but you make of them an abundance just as you do with our lives. Feed us again at this table for service in your name and the strength of the risen Christ. Amen. Amen. 
At this time, I would invite you to make sure that you have your table set, that you might have your cup and your bread, whatever it might look like, in front of you. The Lord be with you. And also also with with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift lift them them to to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It It is is right right to give give thanks and praise. Holy God, breath of life and fire of love, with a mighty wind you brought creation into being, and by a pillar of fire you let your people into, into freedom. We praise you for the gift of your Son, who poured out your Spirit on his disciples of every race and nation. And in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all the drink, saying, This is the new covenant of my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and the sending of the holy and life-giving Spirit, we await his coming again to renew the face of the earth. Send now your Holy Spirit upon us and upon this meal. Anoint us with your gifts of faith, hope, and love, that with thankful hearts we may be witnesses to your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, Father, who who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, come, thy thy will be done, done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses, as we forgive forgive those who trespass trespass against against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now is the time where we share this meal together. Even though we are far, we are still gathered one. Um, One heart, one mind, one spirit. So I would invite you, if you are on your own, um, uh, you aren't, because we're here. Um, and share the body of Christ given for you and also the blood of Christ shed for you. If you're sitting with uh, those around your table, you're welcome to share in this feast together. Let us now continue with the meal. Oh, mm-hmm. 
receive the blessing. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his love and grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, you have fed us with your word and our hearts burn within us. Through this meal, you have opened us to your presence. Now send us forth to share the gifts of Easter with all in need, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. God. Alleluia. Oh, by the way, we would love to see those who are able come join us for the Pentecost parking lot parade. We'll see you out there. Peace be with you all. Mm -hmm. 